I've had about a 25 year history working in the Antarctic to study whales and other marine mammals to try and understand their behavior and the impacts of human activity and climate change on those whales. My research in the Antarctic focuses on marine mammals and specifically baleen whales, trying to understand their behavior, their ecology, how they interact with other facets of their environment and how they're impacted by human activities. The work that the Schmidt Ocean Foundation is funding specifically is to understand how whales were affected by pier construction along the Antarctic Peninsula. Effectively, how much did the sound that humans put into the environment affect the presence or the behavior or the communication of these whales? This research is adding to our, our overall information or understanding of whales in the Antarctic by telling us about how they respond to human activities, but also we're collecting data outside of when humans are active there. So we learn about how these animals do things in their natural setting. That can give us information to tell us about when things change, how animals are changing along with it. So some of the main findings that we've been able to make uh, regarding whales in the Antarctic is that when they arrive from their tropical breeding grounds in December or January, they're absolutely famished and they start foraging almost immediately. For 24 hours a day, they're engorging on krill. They increase their body mass really, really quickly and they do this throughout the season. The other thing that we've learned is that their movements are really dictated by where krill are throughout the season. From early in the season, they're distributed along the continental shelf, and then towards the end of the season, they move into these inshore bays and fjords like the Gurlash Strait, Wilhelmina Bay, and Anvord Bay on the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula. And this is particularly troubling because the Antarctic krill fishery is looking for those same krill at the same time of year. The whales are really good at finding these dense aggregations, and so is the fishery. So the potential for overlap and competition between whales and the fishery is really something we need to investigate further. It's critical that we maintain the balance in the marine ecosystem around the Antarctic for a number of reasons. First off, this is an ecosystem that should exist outside of our influence. We've done a lot from commercial whaling to krill fishing to climate change to impact this marine ecosystem. And it is so important to so many animals and to the global perspective of, of marine ecology and conservation that we owe it to the system and we owe it to ourselves that we do everything that we can to maintain the structure of this area. Listening to nature, listening to whales and other components of the ecosystem is important because it tells us about what the needs are of that system. It tells us how those things function, uh, what the relationships are between animals and their environment. And that's important for us to learn because it gives us a better idea about what we need to protect, but it can also tell us a little bit about ourselves and how relationships between us and our environment or other humans can benefit from how animals in nature act with one another. Whales are a really important component of marine ecosystems because their presence reflects all of these emergent properties of the ocean that have to come together in order to sustain whales. Because they eat so much food, you need to have primary production, you need to have secondary production, and all the things that lead up to being able to have whales there. The presence of whales, especially in large numbers, really relates to the proper functioning of a marine ecosystem. And we need to be able to understand that, to acknowledge it, and then also to be able to do things to maintain that. It's really important that we give oceans rights. I think marine ecosystems, all of nature has a voice, and it needs to be heard. Uh, not only for the heuristic value of nature living on its own for its own reasons, but we benefit from nature. We do better when nature exists in a way that we can enjoy it, that we can respect it, and that we can learn from it. Listening to nature is critical because it tells us what these places need, what these ecosystems need, and how our activities are impacting them, both in a positive way and in a negative way. The proposed marine protected areas have a huge potential to really have a positive impact on the marine ecosystem and specifically on the animals that rely on krill. By finding areas that are important to these animals and saying that we can't do certain things in those areas is a first step towards minimizing our impacts and allowing these animals and the marine ecosystem to function in the way that it should.